The Bristol 188 is a British supersonic research aircraft built by the Bristol Airplane Company in the 1950s. The aircraft had its genesis in operational requirement 330 for a high-speed reconnaissance aircraft, which eventually developed into the Avro 730. As the 730 was expected to operate at high speeds for extended periods of time, more data was needed on high-speed operations, leading to operational requirement ER.134T for a testbed capable of speeds greater than Mach 2. The aircraft was expected to run at these speeds for extended periods of time, allowing it to study kinetic heating effects on such an aircraft. The aircraft was expected to spend a considerable amount of time with a skin temperature around 300 Celsius. Several firms took interest in this very advanced specification and the eventual contract was awarded to Bristol Aircraft in February 1953. Bristol gave the project the type number 188, of which three aircraft were to be built, one a pure test bed and the other two for flight testing. Under contract number KC, 2M, 04, CB.42, B, serial numbers XF923 and XF926 were given on 4 January 1954 to the two that would fly. To support the development of the Avro 730 Mach 3 reconnaissance bomber, another three aircraft were ordered. The 188 project was continued as a high-speed research aircraft. The advanced nature of the aircraft meant that new construction methods had to be developed. Several materials were considered for construction and two specialist grades of steel were selected, a titanium-stabilized 18 to 8 austenitic steel and a 12% CR steel used in gas turbines. The 12% chromium stainless steel with a honeycomb center was used for the construction of the outer skin, to which no paint was applied. The W.G. Armstrong Whitworth Company provided substantial technical help and support to Bristol during this period. They produced major sections of the airframe as a subcontractor. North American with the XB-70 Valkyrie bomber used the same methods of argon welding of stainless steel honeycomb sheet metal. A fused quartz windscreen and canopy and cockpit refrigeration system were designed and fitted but were never tested in the environment for which they had been designed. The specification for the aircraft required engine installations which permitted the fitting of different air intakes, engines and propelling nozzles. The 188 was originally intended to have Avon engines but the half-ton lighter each Gyron Jr. was substituted in June 1957, necessitating the engines mounted further forward with longer nacellas and jet pipes. The Gyron Jr. was then under development for the Saunders Rowe Sr. 177 supersonic interceptor and incorporated a fully variable reheat, which achieved a smooth variation in thrust between dry and full reheat so being one of the first in the world to give continuous variation in thrust from idle to max reheat. This choice of power plant resulted in the 188 having a typical endurance of only 25 minutes, not long enough for the high-speed research tests that were required. Chief test pilot Godfrey L. Otti reported that while the 188 transitioned smoothly from subsonic to supersonic flight, the Gyron Jr. engines were prone to surging beyond that speed, causing the aircraft to pitch and yaw. In order to solve the aerodynamic and flutter problems, a large number of scale models were tested. In May 1960, the first airframe was delivered to the Royal Aircraft Establishment at Farnborough for structural tests, both heated and unheated, before moving on to Ray Bedford. XF-923 undertook the first taxiing trials on 26 April 1961, although due to problems, the first flight was not until 14 April 1962. XF-923 was intended to remain with Bristol for its initial flights and evaluation before turning it over to the MOA. XF-926 had its first flight, using XF-923's engines, on 26 April 1963. Across 51 flights, it reached a top speed of Mach 1.88 at 36,000 feet. The longest subsonic flight lasted only 48 minutes, as 70% of its fuel was needed to reach its operational altitude. The first prototype made its first public appearance in September 1962 when it was displayed on the ground and in the air at that year's Farnborough Air Show. In the same year, the aircraft was seen in the film Some People. Measurements collected during testing were recorded on board and transmitted to the ground station for recording. The flight information transmitted meant that a ground pilot could advise the pilot. The project suffered a number of problems. The main being that the fuel consumption of the engines did not allow the aircraft to fly at high speeds long enough to evaluate the thermal soaking of the airframe, which was one of the main research areas it was built to investigate. Combined with fuel leaks, the inability to reach its design speed of Mach 2 and a takeoff speed at nearly 300 mph, the test phase was severely compromised. 
The inconclusive nature of the research into the use of stainless steel led to Concords being constructed from conventional aluminum alloys with a Mach limit of 2.2. Experience gained with the Gyron Jr. engine, which was the first British gas turbine designed for sustained supersonic operation, additionally later assisted with the development of the Bristol Olympus 593 power plant which was used on both Concorde and the BACTSR2. The announcement that all development was terminated was made in 1964, the last flight of XF-926 taking place on 12 January 1964. By the end of the program, considered the most expensive to date for a research aircraft in Great Britain, each aircraft had to be cannibalized in order to keep the designated airframe ready for flight. In April 1966, both 188 fuselages were transported to the proof and experimental establishment at Shoeburyness, Essex to act as targets for gunnery trials, but during 1972, XF-926 was dismantled and moved to RAF Cosford to act as instructional airframe 8368M, and is preserved at the Royal Air Force Museum Cosford in Shropshire. Bristol 188XF-923 was prominently featured in Some People, a feature film primarily shot in Bristol.